He's a bit off there. He can do better than that. We've got an hour of practice anyways. So just really quickly as well, when people are speaking, um, I'm sure it's okay to take photos and videos, but when you upload them, use those hashtags, Black Lives Matter, Stop Black Deaths in Custody. We need to get this shit trending. So we've got an hour, and so what we want to do is try and fill this whole part, uh, this part up, but then also, you know, we want to adhere to social distancing as well. So if you're in a group of 20, in that group of 20, you have to be uh, 1.5 meters away from each other, and then the next group of 20 has to be four meters away from you. So we'll just try and remember that. Also, we've got room up here as well. We want to cover this whole place. So when we're ready to go, just remember you can go up here as well. We have face masks and hand sanitizer as well. So if you're looking for some, uh, come up. We have some bottles of water for the elders as well. We've got a bunch of chairs here that are already designated for some, some of the speakers and some of the elders as well. So be mindful of these chairs right here. But one thing we're also doing as well is we're making sure we're in groups of 20. Um, and we're, you know, those groups of 20 um, are 1.5 meters away from each other, and the next group of 20 is four meters away from each other, just so we can, you know, curb this spread. Because, you know, the next thing that's going to come out of this is these, you know, racist uh, newspapers and council members say, here, yeah, all these black files are spreading COVID 19. But just remember there's room up here as well for people to go as well. Can you see me in the back? Can, can you see me in the back? Okay, let's just like do some crowd participation. So if you're in the back. Ready? One, two, three. It's so that we, it's so that coppers couldn't harass black coppers on their way here to the rally. And the same thing after as well. Yeah, if you are leaving here, make sure you go in, in numbers. And then when you do come in contact with coppers, make sure you pull your phone in. So it looks like there's more people coming again. So what we might do, because we'll see which part of the crowd is allowed to say. Let's stop any further Aboriginal deaths in custody and to heal our communities who continue to suffer from their racist legislation and their repression and their legislative laws that take away our rights. This is why we're calling this. This is why our people come together. And we've been doing this here. And we keep doing it. And we're going to keep doing it. Why are people are dying in custody? Our voices are going to grow louder. They don't want to become the law. And we'll see that here today. So thank you for coming here. As we make our demands upon them, the legislators, the demands that we make, these are our demands from the prison blacks and the war representatives. That the police and justice system be dismantled. And a system built on our blood of Christian lies and paternalism cannot be reborn. And a system of racism cannot end, end without a system change. We want to change. What do we want? What do we want? What do we want? 
and the defunding of the police force and instead funding our communities was allowing the, the complete Aboriginal control of Aboriginal affairs. That means self-determination, the complete control of our own affairs. What do we want? What do we want? And three, the immediate end of police brutality and racist policing practices. The end of police brutality. What do we want? What do we want? What do we want? And the charging of all police officers and correction officers with murder and terrible torture. And that's not in a comic book, and that's not just in the United States. That's here in Queensland. That's just down the road. That just happened over at Musgrove Park. That just happened over there. That's just been happening. People tend to forget that we've been oppressed and downtrodden in this country for over 230 years. They put the Aboriginal Protection Act on our people. And that protection act said you can't go anywhere unless you have a permit. You can't do anything. You can't go anywhere unless you get permission from the chief protector. And you know who the chief protector was? You know who was? The local copper. They put the local copper in charge of our people. And then they made our people go out and work. And a lot of our old people here today, they had to work and had their way to stolen from them. And you know, you know where the money went? In the local coppers' pocket. They took the money off our people. And those local coppers now, property owners out there, the ones that we have, we have to go and talk to them about going on our own country. This is what's going on in this country. This is what's going on in the state. Aboriginal Protection Act. Up until 1984, we were subject to that in this state. People kind of say that was back in, when Captain Cook came in 1788 or 77. When I was born in the state here, I was classed as a non-citizen. No rights to vote. No rights to go anywhere. And people talk about this thing like, oh, you, you, got, you got no problem, you got nothing to argue about. You got nothing to complain about. While I'm still black fellow, while I'm Aboriginal, and I'm in this country here, we gotta have a voice still. And together, we can make that voice and turn, them, turn them to a loud law. I'll continue. The law of the state, the federal government, the fund families, for trauma support that have suffered from the loss of their family members whilst in custody. And we've all experienced one family member or some extended family who have been, who have died in custody. I can speak personally. I lost my cousin brother in Stuart Creek. I lost my next nephew out here. I had a wake up. I lost my, even my son in care. You know, I can speak it from this point, this, some of the people who experience about this, so I've experienced this. But that doesn't make me hate. That makes me go all the more to make our voice louder. And I appreciate that people can stand here with us. We're on the Another police officer or station to investigate another police officer for a complaint on misconduct made against them. In all future investigations be held by an independent body. Training in all schools across the country and that it requires to be compulsory and made subject for the first year of university students. Yes! Yes! Real implementation of the 339 recommendations from the Royal Commission into Aboriginal deaths in custody. $40 million was spent in the Royal Commission into Aboriginal deaths in custody. Over 400 Aboriginal people have died in custody. More Aboriginal people have died in custody since the Royal Commission than before it ever happened. And the 339 recommendations have gone unheard. Un they've gone unheard. They don't adhere to any of them. It's not made law and it's not put in the legislation. And that's why coppers can get away with bashing blackfellas and letting them bleed to death in the prison cell. 
Shame! 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 We want the recommendations from the Royal Commission into death and custody implemented and made law in this country so that coppers can, so that coppers can be accountable and the state can be accountable. That if our families are suffering from the loss of their family members, they can't legislate this the way our families should be compensated and full restitution and, this, and it should be made public. And 14, and finally, we want justice for the families of those who have been murdered whilst in custody, and for those who have been murdered by racist white people. Now when we say white people, we are referring to the white Australia policy. The white Australia policy was that we weren't even supposed to live, we weren't even supposed to survive. The Australian Constitution had us, had us um, written out in Section 51 that they could make laws for the good governments of the Commonwealth, but Aboriginal people were exempt because they thought we were going to die out. They thought they were going to feed us with disease and they thought that we were going to die. And it, was a, it was a failed genocide and we're still here and we're still speaking and our voice is loud and our voice is getting louder. Let's get into a war. What do we want? What do we want? What do we want? Let's go and get it. Hello, everybody. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Eddie Ruska. Beside me here is my sister, Terry, and also my brother, Steve Cogger. On behalf of the uh, people and the terrible people, we'd like to welcome you all here. I'm not going to say much because I'm not a talker, but I'll give you a hand you over to Kerry, who is a talker. <laughs> Karumba Bauka Yagara Charana. Friendly greetings, everybody. Welcome to Yagara Country. We are standing on Yagara Country and we are Thompsons, Mortons, New Farms, Dandurban, uh, Dinaba, Gerwali, Ngaywin. And we would like to say uh, what a privilege it is for us all to be here united. United here today because enough is enough is enough. <laughs> and I'm not going to say much more because I will. But I also would like to just um, say a prayer. Our tribes, We've got the um, Gurunpul, we've got Kwandamuka, we've got uh, Mutimbara, which is our West Yagara. And I want to acknowledge the elders here today who've been in this long march with us and before us. And we're following in their footsteps. And remember, Guri is in the DNA for nearly 70,000 years. And so I just want to acknowledge the ancestors that cared for country for nearly 70,000 years. I want to acknowledge our neighbours and who we had close and we still maintain close relationships with. Our Yugambe, Waka Waka, Jinnabara and Kabi Kabi and the neighbouring to them. And we all kept this country and people we never had suicides and we didn't certainly have deaths in custody. So I want to leave it as that and I'd like to end on a prayer, a blessing in language after Uncle Stephen speaks. Hello and good day to everyone. Thanks for turning up here and, and on this very, very important issue. My name's Stephen Coggle Senior and I'm part of this traditional owner group. 
but I want to thank you all for turning up here this morning. The Aboriginal people, the Torres Strait Islander people, the South Sea Islander people, the Pacific Islander people, African, Spanish, all migrants to this country. We thank you for turning up here. And our white supporters, give yourself a yell. And we thank you. I just want to give glory to Jesus Christ and thank him for sending us all here today so that we can hear what's going on. Aboriginal people didn't just happen to be in this country when white fellas come along. This country was declared the great south land of the Holy Spirit. And it was declared before Cook ever arrived in this country. So that makes us all sovereign people in this country today. No one can take that sovereignty from us. No one should be able to take that sovereignty from us. It's a God-given sovereignty. No one can deny it. And as soon as we get the governments at all levels start to recognise it, then we can get that change. We need that change, and we will achieve that change. And, and uh, I just want to say, yes, we didn't all just happen to be here. We didn't all stumble down the Malaysian archipelago. No one got, no one's here lost in the Indonesian fishermen. We were placed in this country purposely. And now we find ourselves here today, 230 odd years later, still being prosecuted and, and, and fined and jailed, incarcerated for some, some agenda that has nothing to do with our sovereignty. We're Aboriginal, Torres Strait Island people, and forever we've been here, forever we will be. Amen. I want to also encourage us today
social media. But when you leave from here, back up the stop. You need to continue to fight.